live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. Good evening everyone. Those stories shortly, but first tonight, a fisherman's body has been found off the coast of Tribunna this afternoon. For more on this story, let's bring in our reporter Letitia Wallace. Good evening Letitia. What are the circumstances surrounding his death? Rachel, police are still working to determine how the local man came to be in the water. But what we do know at this stage is that he is a commercial fisherman in his 60s from Orford. Police say he's been setting cray pots north of Mariah Island. A passing vessel came across the drifting boat and noticed no one was on board and raised the alarm around 2pm. Police vessels and the Westpac rescue helicopter searched the area for around an hour and a half before the chopper spotted the man's body in the water. I understand that the conditions on the water today were, were good, there was no issues from that perspective. Uh, police have actually taken possession of the vessel and taken that back to Tribunna and we'll conduct some investigations. Our forensics personnel are also over there conducting the investigation as we speak. Anyone who was out on the water in that area this afternoon is urged to call police with any information they may have that will help detectives piece together what happened in the lead up to today's tragic event. A report will now be prepared for the coroner. Rachel? Thank you for that update, Letitia. Letitia Wallace joining us there live with that extremely sad news from Tribunna. And the developing situation in Victoria could have ramifications on the reopening of our own borders. For more on this, we're joined now live by our reporter Ebony Ablett. Good evening, Ebony. What does this mean for plans to reopen the state on July 24? Good evening, Rachel. It means it's becoming more likely Victoria will be excluded from the Premier's plans to reopen our borders on that date. This comes just days after South Australia abandoned its decision to reopen to Victoria due to the surge in coronavirus cases. Peter Gutwin says he continues to take public health advice daily about the issue and will not bow to pressure on his decision. He says it's quite likely that our borders will reopen to the states perceived to be doing better, but with no direct flights to places like Queensland and South Australia, the government is working out if it will make an allowance for people to transit through Melbourne Airport. To um, understand whether or not um, Tullamarine is able to provide um, appropriate transiting here? arrangements. Um, you know, one of the reasons that I have stepped into this cautiously is so that we can have a good understanding of what's occurring in those other jurisdictions as well as Victoria uh, before we make a final decision in terms of um, who will open our borders to. And Rachel, the Premier has confirmed a formal detailed review into Victoria's situation is being undertaken this week, with a final decision on where we'll be able to go set to be announced on Friday. We will await that with interest. Thank you very much for that, Ebony. Ebony Ablett joining us live. Two people have been charged with attempted aggravated armed robbery after they allegedly held up a Moona service station yesterday afternoon. A 35-year-old female and a 16-year-old male are accused of demanding cash from a staff member at the Caltex on Main Road. Police allege the man was armed with a wooden baton and smashed a perspex screen. The pair was arrested shortly after 8pm in Glenorchy. Both appeared in the Hobart Magistrates Court this morning. A man is set to face court tomorrow, accused of snatching a handbag in two separate incidents in Devonport on Friday. The 28-year-old Launceston man remains in custody after being charged with armed robbery, attempted robbery and evading police. And a fire that ripped through a West Launceston home yesterday afternoon has caused $150,000 worth of damage. The blaze broke out in Georgina Court just after 3 o'clock. Police say it was a housing Tasmania property and no one was home at the time. The cause of the fire remains unknown. A treatment trial is underway to cure wombats of a deadly skin disease. The University of Tasmania is carrying out the research, which is proving successful. It's a common drug used to treat pets with fleas and ticks. Now Brevecto is being trialled as a solution for psychoptic mange in wombats. Increasingly we're finding it applicable to other animals and, uh, and potentially has some really important outcomes for wombats. So far the results are promising. The trials have gone really well so far. Uh, we've been able to show that the drug is safe to administer to wombats and that it is long lasting. A single dose we believe will last for about three months in a wombat so it will cure them of the disease and protect them. 
Mange disease only affects around 5% of the wombat population in Tasmania, but the outcome is devastating. It is a really horrible disease for wombats to get. So wombats who acquire sarcoptic mange tend to uh, suffer a really slow demise and ultimately die from it. Wombats from Bonnarong Wildlife Sanctuary and Zudu were involved in the initial trials, which were made possible through an Australian Research Council grant. And now we're moving also into field trials. We're actually going to test whether we can use Brevecto to manage the disease for individual and populations of wombats uh, at field sites in Tasmania and New South Wales. Protecting one of our most precious native animals for decades to come. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. It's regarded as one of Tasmania's worst environmental disasters. In July 1995, the Iron Baron collided with Hebe Reef, spilling more than 300 tonnes of oil into the sea. 25 years later, those who responded to the emergency say it could have been much worse. They were heartbreaking scenes Tasmania had never witnessed. Former wildlife officer Nick Mooney had little idea what he was up against when the first call came. The people informing us of the oil spill said there shouldn't be any significant problems, you'd better have a look. Things couldn't be further from the truth. Disaster struck about 7.40 last night. The bulk carrier Iron Baron pushed onto the notorious Hebe Reef just off the mouth of the Tamer during a heavy storm. The crew was evacuated. Oil was spewing out at an alarming rate. Concerns were also mounting over its cargo of manganese ore bound for Temco. Possible if it stays for long enough in uh, the sea conditions that are prevailing at the moment that uh, it may eventually break up. Luckily, conditions improved. The vessel's owner, BHP, immediately flew staff to Georgetown. Those people arrived, would you believe, on a, um, on a small plane into the Georgetown airport and um, let me tell you, they didn't look too good. They were a bit green around the gills. Specialists tried to grasp the magnitude of the spill. This is a very complex current system around the mouth of the Tamer and it can turn up in the most surprising places and it has. Uh, it's no surprise to us because we expect the unexpected. The impact was far and wide. Oil has already appeared as far east as the big penguin rookery on Ninth Island. To the west, a large slick was spotted this morning off Port Sorrell. 2,000 penguins were cleaned. Some were tagged with radio transmitters and released in the state south. Others were airlifted to Victoria's Phillip Island. Almost all survived, but surveys later found 20,000 had vanished from rookeries. We found that a bit of oiling only as big as a 50 cent piece would eventually kill a penguin if it wasn't cleaned. If the spill had occurred in summer, countless shearwaters would have been wiped out. Salvaging the stricken vessel was also a hard task. Ron Riley was among those who undertook surveys at the reef. Guarantees could not be given that we would not get more oil coming out of the ship as we brought it into Bell Bay, which we wanted to do. We, we actually planned for it. We had it planned down in minute detail uh, how to get the ship into Bell Bay. It was refused entry to the port, prompting the Commonwealth to step in. She's been anchored off the Tamer River for about two weeks, but today the Commonwealth Environment Protection Agency issued a permit allowing her to be sunk. Refloated and dragged northeast of Flinders Island to an old ammunition dumping ground, she was scuttled in 4,000 metres of water. A Transport Safety Bureau report later blamed a lack of a full passage plan a lack of consideration for wind and tide direction and misinterpreted radar information. BHP was forced to pay out millions of dollars in compensation. For Georgetown, it showed just how strong the community is. The one thing for me that makes it so profound is the way the community came together. And I think the way Temco supported the community, but the community in general and the volunteers, I think the resolve by the community to get this situation under control and sorted was was as good an experience as you could possibly have. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Candidates for the Legislative Council seat of Hewan are making their final pitches ahead of the August 1st election. Jobs, roads and improved health care are seen as the major issues in the region. The picturesque Hewan Valley is this month a political hotspot. Six candidates, one Labour, one Greens, one Shooters and Fishers and three Independents vying for a seat in the Upper House. Uh, I think that community spirit is really good and strong. Um, a lot of people know everyone else. 
it's the greatest place in Tasmania and I'm very passionate about representing the Ewan for another six years. Candidates are on the final stretch ahead of election day. The future of local jobs an issue high on their agenda. I'm setting up for a fairer and greener economy. I want to make sure that no one is left behind during this pandemic and the recession that's going to follow. Business is quiet, the hue and is quiet, tourism certainly not help the situation and the closure of the centres has not been helpful either, so we are going to struggle. The condition of roads also in the spotlight. It's ridiculous. I mean, you've, when you've come from Hobart, you are being faced with, you know, potholes, you are changed with, faced with speed limits. That's not going to work. A lot of them could, 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 could be improved greatly. Um, but yeah, definitely, I think definitely they, they could do an improvement. Healthcare, another area of contention, as the region grapples with an ageing population. We just need more of what we've got because 21% of the population that are aged is quite high for a small regional area. We have people who are waiting on waiting lists for years to have back surgery, to have hip surgery. What are these people going to do? The contest also a battle for the future direction of the upper house, with some candidates looking to keep it independent. The Legislative Council is designed as a house of review and it should be that way with, with people having an open mind. Having independence in there, they can scrutinise the legislation with an open mind. They're, they're not bound by party politics. This is a movement of bigger than just one person. I'm one of thousands of people who, who believe in green values and uh, that's what I'll represent. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Winter is a ruthless and unforgiving time of year for the homeless in Tasmania. But a Launceston charity is trying to make it a little more bearable for those sleeping rough. They may not seem like much, but these storage lockers could make all the difference for someone sleeping on the street. It keeps them safe. They can come back at the end of the day knowing that they're going to have a dry, warm sleeping bag to sleep in the next, you know, that night and also dry clothing for the next day. Kirsten Ritchie came up with the idea after constantly seeing homeless people lugging their belongings around. I had to think outside the box and look great, like they can be put anywhere, they're mobile and yeah, they're going to be really good. Local businesses have given up their time chipping in to help complete the project. I've had like people, you know, sleeping in the park across the road from me, so I um, saw this pop up on, on social media and thought, you know, great opportunity to help. The donation of the um, cameras and the lights and solar panels to set uh, the security side up, so oh, it's just overwhelming. The charity relies solely on donations from the public, providing meals and warm clothes to those sleeping rough. It has had to change the way it operates during COVID. We're going actually out to find people that are sleeping rough, and not just in the central city, but further out into the suburbs as well, which we weren't really doing before. Its next mission, Sleep pods. <laughs> I just would love to get that plan achieved, you know, that goal achieved, and that means we need a lot more money though to, to make this happen. Again, it'll be a mobile unit so they can go anywhere. If you'd like to help, head to the Strike It Out website. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. Tasmanian Formula 3A Alex Peroni has proven he's one to watch this season, taking out third place in the season's opening race. He rose from eighth on the grid to a podium finish in his first professional race since his shocking crash at Monza last year. Austria presented perfect conditions on track for the first race of the Formula 3 season. How good is it to see Alexander Peroni back in the car after that horrendous airborne accident in Monza? Tasmanian Alex Peroni proved why he's one to watch from the first lap. As they go over the line, Piastri, Zendelli, Sergeant Peroni up from eighth on the grid. Holding steady in fourth position, Peroni made his move in the middle of lap four. And now Peroni sweeps around the outside to take third place. Lap 19 his best, setting the fastest lap of the day. Those final few positions are definitely up for grabs as Peroni delivers the fastest lap of the race. Ending in a miraculous finish for Peroni, he's made an F3 podium in his comeback race. But back from injury, Campos pumped up because Peroni's heading to the podium. The podium was different from anything seen in F3 before, with distancing and masks a must, but champagne celebrations remained the same. Back home in Tasmania, Father Piero has been watching on proudly and says Alex is hoping to back up his strong performance for the rest of the competition. For many reasons it was a great result and I hope that it turns out to be a springboard for a successful season. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News.
Good evening. Cloudy conditions for the west and south, fine and clear across the north and east. Devonport with the state's top of 17 degrees, 15 in Hobart, Launceston and Burnie both 16. St Helens 16 also, the friendly beaches and ooze 15, 14 at Grove and Lowhead, Smithton 13, King Island and Mariah Island both 12, 11, the high at Strawn. Low cloud about the west, south and central parts today. Cold, unstable air over the Tasman Sea following a front. Low cloud extends over South Australia, Victoria and into New South Wales. To tomorrow's chart now and a cold front will cross Tasmania. A high will linger over South Australia. Another cold front to cross WA. West to southwestly winds tomorrow at 15 to 25 knots. Swells to 2 metres in the east up to 3 to 4 metres in the west and south. And a strong wind warning from the northern tip of Flinders Island to low Rocky Point and for all southeast inshore waters tomorrow. Monday's forecast now. Showers increasing in Hobart, 13. Dover showers and 12, a top of 11 on the way for ooze. A possible shower for Launceston, 14. Devonport and Scottsdale, 13. Burnie and Stanley, both a shower, 13. Showers forecast for Strawn, 13 there also. In the east, St Helens and Swansea, a shower, 14. Ross looking at a maximum of 12 degrees. Turning to Tuesday now on a fine day, some possible light showers about the southeast coast, areas of morning frost. Wednesday another fine day apart from some possible light showers about the north but widespread morning frost on the way and Thursday showers for the north and west but fine elsewhere. Capital cities tomorrow in Melbourne looking at a top of 14, Canberra fine and 13, a sunny one for Sydney 18, 22 in Brisbane, Darwin 32 in Perth, showers and 18 degrees. Right now it's 12 degrees in Hobart, Launceston 9 and mostly clear and Devonport is clear and 11. Rach, that's Sunday's weather. Lovely. Thank you very much for that, Laura. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Good night.